Hello and welcome back to the 21st episode of Greek Speaks. This week we're talking about Jason and the Argonaut. Medea will be mentioned, but I'm going to do a video on her um, play at some other point. I'm probably just going to do a bunch of the plays, so like Paul, just Medea, your style I'll probably do, because I read that over the summer and it's really good. The quest for the Golden Fleece, the quest for the Argonaut is for the Golden Fleece. And the Golden Fleece uh, is exactly what it sounds like. It's a fleece from a ram or a sheep that is made out of gold. And the way that this is formed is there's this king who has two kids with a nymph or some sort of like lower goddess. And the kids' names are Priox and Hell, Hel, like H-E-L-L-E. And eventually the king falls in love with a mortal and the goddess is not too happy about this. And there's this big plague that falls upon the land, and this plague, big famine that falls upon among the blah, that falls upon the land, and the evil stepmother decides that and convinces the king that the only way to stop it is to <clears throat> is to sacrifice the kids. Which, uh, man, there's so much just bad fathers in ancient mythology. Like, holy crap! And their mom is pretty mad about this, understandably, and so she sends a golden ram to rescue the kids, and hell falls off, called that spot the hell spot, it's the Dardanelles Strait now, in between Greece, Greece and Turkey. Yeah, I actually took a course on the Crusades, where I had to know where the Strait of the Dardanelles was, and I kept calling it the hell spot, and everybody in my class was like, the what? And I was like, oh, classics major. Never mind. Thankfully, I got it under control for when we were tested on it. But that was that was fun that I had to rename that in my brain. Pre Preix gets to uh, this kingdom on the shores of the Black Sea, which is that sea right above the Mediterranean, and sacrifices the ram to Zeus there and hangs the fleece up in a garden in this kingdom. And that's where it stays. That's or even the Golden Fleece. Switching to Jason. So Jason is the son of King Aeson. I don't even know if it's even said what their kingdom is. But anyway, so Aeson's brother Peleus has, you know, kind of taken over the kingdom and, and exiled Jason and Aeson. Uh, and Jason was raised by Chiron, the gentle centaur, and my favorite, one of my favorite people in all of mythology. Jason learns of his birthright and he starts going back toward the kingdom. And he runs into this old lady by a river. And he's like, okay, I'm going to give her a piggyback ride, essentially, across the river. And they get across the river. Jason loses a sandal in the river. And the old lady transforms into Hera. And, like, the goddess of marriage and womanhood. And usually doesn't like heroes, but she really likes Jason. So, so she says... You know, I'm gonna protect you and all of your wanderings and da 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 da. Um, which is very interesting because, again, Hera doesn't really like heroes. Typically, heroes are the sons of Zeus. I will mention Jason is one of the very few purely mortal heroes we have. It's like Jason, Odysseus, who is the grandson of a, of a demigod, I think. Yeah. His grandfather is the son of Hermes, so... I think Odysseus is like a 16th demigod or something. It doesn't really matter. For all intents and purposes, Odysseus is basically mortal. Typically, demigods are direct demigods of their given parent, and usually they're sons of Zeus. So it doesn't entirely surprise me that Hera doesn't like, like, doesn't hate Jason, but it's just very interesting because she usually isn't, you know, wrapped up in the affairs of demigods in general. Um, Probably this is because, like, she's the perfect woman, so she needs to be in the house and not muddling in men's affairs and all that misogynistic funness. That's just my theory, but it wouldn't surprise me if it's true. I haven't looked into it much, but I also don't know if anyone has theorized about that. I mean, probably. Anyway, so Jason continu continues on, and he gets to the court, and Peleus starts freaking out. Because a couple years earlier, he had gotten a prophecy that says, Hey, the guy who's going to overthrow you is going to come to you with one sandal on. And so Peleus freaks out. Um, and is like, look, I get you're my nephew. 
or my second cousin or whatever, if you can go get this golden fleece thing, I will give you the kingdom back, no problem. And, again, keep an eye out on that, because usually when uh, older men want to kill younger men, they send him off on an impossible quest. It happens in this one, it happens in Perseus, it happens in Belforon. Anyway, so Jason's like, cool. And so he starts building a boat and getting together a bunch of adventure buddies. Sometimes it's Hercules. Uh, in the movie, Jason and the Argonauts, there's Hercules on there. A couple times it's Orpheus. In the translation that I usually read, uh, Achilles' father, Peleus, is on it. And it's just a lot of, it's just a lot of big names in mythology. And so they set out, and the guy who's building the boat is named Argos. Argo. Argus. No, no. So, they name it the Argon. And yes, the masthead is shaped like Hera. So yes, that is, that is accurate to the 19... 86 movie? 68? Anyway, so they start going, and they run into this guy named Phineas, who's a blind former king, and he can speak prophecy. Uh, Zeus does not like this, as Zeus stupidly doesn't like prophets. Every time Phineas sits down to eat, a bunch of harpies, who are these, like, bird eagle women, swoop in and, like, destroy all of his food. Jason and the other Argonauts go, okay, if you help us on our journey, we will get rid of the uh, harpies. And there are these two sons of the North Wind, Boreas, Calais, and Zades are their name, names. And so they're fated to get rid of the harpies. And so the next time that Penny sits down to eat, they chase off the harpies with their swords. And Penny says, okay, thank you for getting rid of them. You're going to go through the Clashing Rocks and dove out in front of you and... If the dove can, dove can get through, you can. Which I don't really know how that works, but okay. So they do that, and they patch the Clashing Rocks. And the Clashing Rocks are said, once a ship goes through them, they are, like, they're fixed. So it's not a hazard anymore after Jason goes through them. Um, they also appear in the Odyssey as a threat. So, kind of screws with the mythological time scale, typically thought of, but... You have to remember these are cultural stories and they're not going to follow a perfect timeline. Unfortunately, that annoys me. <laughs> but I understand why it's a thing. Anyway, so they get to Colchis, which is this kingdom on the edge of the Black Sea. And they meet up with a Aetes, who is the king of Colchis. And just so happens, he has a daughter named Medea who falls in love with Jason. Why do these people keep falling in love like this? I don't get it. AED says, okay, I'll give you the golden place if you can do a bunch of tasks for me. And then they send him off to bed and whatever. And Medea knows exactly what these tasks are going are gonna to be. And Medea is also a witch. She has the ability to make Jason safe. So Jason's tasks are yoke fire-breathing bulls and uh, sow the ground with them, till the ground with them. And then he has to plant dragon's teeth, which are going to sprout up skeleton warriors, and then he has to fight the skeleton warriors. As you do. And Medea says, okay, you, goes to Jason and says, okay, you need to put on this ointment that is going to make you pretty much impervious to fire. And then when the skeletons grow up from the ground, you need to throw a rock in the middle of them so they start fighting each other. So Jason does this, and it works out pretty well. So yes, that is also <laughs> accurate to the movie. So Aedes, because the Golden Fleece brings prosperity and, like, good harvest and everything to the land that it's in, you know, Aedes really doesn't want to get rid of it. And so Jason and Medea that night go to the Golden Fleece, and the tree that it's dangling on has a dragon surrounding it. So that's fun. Uh, and so Medea lulls the dragon to sleep, Jason grabs the Golden Fleece, and they book for the harbor. And so they're they're sailing away, and Aedes sends his fleets after him, them, which also includes uh, Medea's brother. And Medea, somehow the brother gets onto the boat, and Medea kills him, and chops him up and starts dropping him into the ocean in different segments. So that when they buried him, they would need all the segments, so it slowed them down. Which is a great strategy, but also, like, holy mother of the lord. Wow! Okay. So anyway, they get back to 
Jason's kingdom, and Pelleas is like, well, you were supposed to die on that quest. Crap. Uh, and so Medea shows Pelleas' daughters this soup she's making kind of thing, and so she taught this, like, magical potion. And so she chops up a, an old lamb, an old goat. She puts him into the thing, drops some magic herbs in it, and, you know, out springs out this, like, newly born lamb. And so the daughters are like, great, we can restore dad's health. And so they do the same thing to their father and dump him in the, the potion. The problem is Medea didn't put in these magic herbs. And so Peleus just dies and Jason becomes king of this kingdom. So yeah, the Golden Fleece isn't really mentioned after that myth. So Jason is eventually exiled from that area because of Peleus and... Later, he tries to marry the king, one of the, a princess from farther off land, and that's the whole plot of Medea, so we'll get to that. But eventually, Jason is, you know, older, and he goes and lays under the, the bow of the Argo, which is, like, a significantly old boat, boat at this point in time, and he falls asleep, and the bow, uh, rots off and crushes him. That's one of the ways I've heard him die. Which is not great. It's not the worst death for a Greek hero, but it's definitely not the best. I would say Perseus probably has the best ending. I don't even think I know... I don't even think I've ever seen, like, how Perseus dies. So that is Jason and the Argonauts. Sorry, this wasn't, like, as analytical as I usually like to go into. There's a lot of analytics with Medea. I am probably might do her next... I don't know, I'm thinking about doing either all of the quest heroes and then doing all the, like, poetry and plays, but I might just do my day next week. So, if you have any myths that you want me to look at in particular, as always, put them down in the comments, and I will see you next week.